You might say that for the folks in one isolated small town, complaints about COVID lockdowns are very much on point, as our Lee Cowan discovered firsthand. COVID had a pretty hard time finding its way to Point Roberts, Washington. There's been only one confirmed case here since the pandemic began. It is remote. On a map, Point Roberts looks like it should be part of Canada, except that this little fingertip dangles just below the 49th parallel, officially making it part of Washington state. We call it Pretend America, the yeah. world's <laughs> largest gated community. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's kidding, sort of. The only way for Americans to get to the rest of the U.S. by land is a 24-mile drive through Canada. That means getting past two international border guards. That's been our primary access to our country, is through another country, and it's just been built that way. Keep moving with purpose. As the fire chief, Chris Carlton, is organizing about 1,000 vaccines for all the residents here. That's the good news. The bad news is that in keeping with U.S. and Canadian COVID travel restrictions, without an essential reason, no one, vaccinated or not, drives in or out of Point Roberts anymore. I know communities across the United States are suffering, but because of our geographical oddity, we've been disproportionately affected. If you found a plane, you could fly off Point Roberts, although this is what passes for the airport. They've tried a ferry too, but because of choppy seas, it sometimes can't make the crossing. And even if it does, then what? Having to rent a car when you get there on the foot ferry, uh, getting taxis, Ubers, and a lot of my community don't have the funds to do that. Despite the difficulties getting in or out, Canadian officials say the border restrictions are justified because residents in Point Roberts have most of everything they need. They say that you're sort of self-sufficient. That's a lie. That but they say a, that though, right? Well, yeah, but as someone who's never been here, that is Canada, this is the United States. <laughs> That's Brian Calder, the director of the Point Roberts Chamber of Commerce. We have no doctors here, we have no vets here, um, no medical facility like a drugstore. We got a list of more things we don't have compared to everyone else than what we do have. But what they have in abundance is beauty, something nearby Canadians can't resist. They pour across the border in the summertime, quadrupling the population here. But now, all they can do is come to that invisible boundary, in this case marked by small yellow barricades, and look across. I was hopeful in the beginning. That That's I, where we I met Maggie Moore. So this little curb, it might as well be a 40-foot wall. Exactly. She owns this cottage just a stone's throw from where we were talking. And so do a lot of other Canadians. You can tell which ones because they haven't been allowed to tend to their properties in almost a year. It's devastating. I miss it like um, a family member I haven't seen in over a year, truly. Cross-border commerce is the lifeblood of Point Roberts, making up as much as 85% of the annual income for the businesses here. My credit card thinks I've died and gone to heaven because I haven't used it down here. <laughs> Without Canadians, this little corner of America may have dodged COVID, but not its ripple effect. There's some days we don't have a single customer. Beth Calder runs a package receiving business here. Canadians can avoid expensive international shipping fees on their Amazon and eBay purchases by just picking them up across the border instead. But for almost a year, those same packages have sat orphaned, some 2,000 of them. And what does that do to your business? Oh, it's crippling. It's very crippling. Last March, I had to lay off eight of my 10 staff instantly as soon as the border closed. Canadians also used to cross the border for cheaper prices on eggs and milk. That's in part at least why Point Roberts' only grocery store is this big. Owner, Allie Hayton, thought about closing when the border did, but she knew she couldn't. If I close, there's no access to food for anyone. Thank you. We've got to take care of the people that live here. Some have already moved for good. This used to be a busy street right along the border. Not far away, the gas stations are empty. Restaurants are shuttered. We found a bank that had left. 
Ghost town. It's a ghost town. At the Bald Eagle Golf Club, Rick Hool and the rest of his grounds crew still tend to the empty fairways and bunkers in the hopes that one day their town will get out of the rough, but it has to happen soon. How many people do you normally get? I uh, usually run around 20,000 a year. And this year? None. I know, it's sad. The longer this goes on, the fewer people we're going to have. They have to move for unemployment because there is none here. So how long can that last, though? Well, until we run out of people, period. Point Roberts is a lifestyle as much as it is a destination. Residents pride themselves on their independence. So if they ask for a hand, they really mean it. The fear, though, at least in the age of COVID, is that they may be shouting into the wilderness. We can weather almost anything in our community. We're extremely resilient overall, and that comes with a you know, double-sided sword, right? Because sometimes you can be resilient to the point that other people forget that you're here.